Today's sermon is brought to you by Pastor Robert Dahmer of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our text for this morning is 1 Peter 2, verse 25. For ye were as sheep going astray, but now are returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So the text. My dear friends, this Sunday has often come to be known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Twice in the gospel lesson we heard Jesus say, I am the Good Shepherd. And in the epistle lesson, we are told that we've been returned to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Who is this shepherd and bishop? St. Peter tells us he's more than the good shepherd, but that he's the very best one because he did no sin. Now about whom else can you say that? Politicians promise you much and blame everything else on their opponents. But every word that came from the mouth of our Savior was true and accurate. And he didn't have a social agenda. He didn't come to make the world a better place in which to live. He came to attack the basic problems of humanity, like greed and hate and jealousy and self-worth. He tells us the truth about ourselves, and that's not very pleasant. It's humbling to be told every Sunday that we're by nature sinful and unclean. It's almost humiliating to be repeatedly reminded by that by repentance and remission of sins, we have salvation through the blood of the Lamb. And that's why the world doesn't like Jesus. They hate him, and it was shown at the time of Christ when the scribes and Pharisees came and said to his face, you're mad. You've got a devil. He could have struck them dead at that point for their insolence. And yet we read, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. And this is certainly shown during his passion when he was suffering, enduring the hatred of the Jewish Sanhedrin, or the mockery of the soldiers, or the outright vileness of the Jewish people under the cross, he never cursed or complained. There was no guile found in his mouth. And when it came to the point of physical abuse, when they slapped him and scourged his back and nailed his hands and feet to a cross, he never sought revenge. Quote, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so opened he not his mouth. When he saw the soldiers at the foot of the cross gambling over the clothes from off his back, he didn't revile them, but instead he prayed for them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. At no point did Jesus seek revenge, though he had every right to do it. He submitted because he committed himself, body and soul, to the care of his heavenly Father, who someday would hold the whole world accountable for how they treated his son, whether they rejected him or abused him. Now the apostle tells us all these things about our Savior for one purpose. As the text says, that we should follow his steps are we ready for that? Are we ready to pattern our lives after the life of the Savior? To be holy and righteous in all the things we do, never to seek revenge, 
never to curse or to complain, but to cheerfully submit when someone else does us wrong. Luther, in explaining the Christian life, said in his explanation of the seventh commandment that we should improve and protect our neighbor's property and business. But who does that? How many people work at the job to improve the business? Instead, they complain about wages and hours and benefits. And you see, lawyers tell us that when we suffer abuse, we can sue. They tell us no American has to put up with an unkindly or unfriendly boss or administrator. And we can even see that in personal relationships. By nature, all of us are very touchy. And we tend to snap back because we don't feel we have to take it from a spouse or a parent. But Jesus says, yes, we do. We're called to do that, even though we're right and they're wrong. And you know, spouses can hurt each other the worst way and destroy a marriage because they're simply not humble enough to submit to each other. To suffer wrong with patience doesn't come naturally. And our Savior knows that. And therefore, he recognizes what weak and bumbling creatures we are. The prophet Isaiah describes us perfectly when he says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And that's why we need a good shepherd. A shepherd who forgives all our failings and mistakes and errors and the pride that corrupts our best deeds even before we do them. You see, despite our unworthiness, our Savior really cares. He knows how much his Father loves us and he realizes that the only way to satisfy the just anger of God was for him to sacrifice his life. No other shepherd would be willing or able to do that. And that's what makes our good shepherd the very best. And now he doesn't say to us, I'm your good shepherd, you have to follow me. That wouldn't work with sheep and that doesn't work with us. Sheep won't follow someone even though he's a good shepherd. Sheep are naturally suspicious of a stranger. Sheep need to know a shepherd so well that they recognize his voice and then they'll follow him through the green pastures and still waters and night after night feel secure within the walls of the sheepfold. And that's also true about you and me. We'll never follow Jesus until we, by hearing and learning his word, have come to know him so well that we recognize his voice and we'll go where he leads. He calls us through words of forgiveness and turns our hearts to listen and to believe. And the text is very clear about that. The text does not say, you must return unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. But it says, he turned you. We believe by the grace of God. We can't come to Christ by ourselves. By nature, no man can approach Christ. We believe because the Heavenly Father draws us to him with his powerful word. Listen to his words to, of Jesus. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. And I'll raise him up on the last day through the word of God, 
we've come to know him as our good shepherd, as the way, the truth, and the life. He gives us the faith to believe in his passion for the forgiveness of our sins and to follow where he leads. And if he leads us into the valley of the shadow of death, we're not afraid because his voice has the power to calm every trembling heart. No matter how great the problems of your personal life, no matter how terrible the situation of our world or insecure the, the finances of our country, we are secure in the arms of our good shepherd. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. How secure, he says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. No other relationship among men is as secure as the relationship of a child of God to his heavenly Father, and it's ours by faith and by faith alone. The shepherd calls, Come unto me, you all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And it's a beautiful invitation. But sometimes he uses sterner language. And he says, beware. Beware of the lusts and pleasures of this world. Beware of false prophets. Beware of the work righteous leaven of the scribes and Pharisees. He has to constantly warn us against the dangers of straying away so that by repentance we return turn and find spiritual safety. And if it should happen that we stray so far that we no longer hear his voice, he doesn't give up. Instead, he may come to us with adversity, with troubles and sorrows to bring us to our knees as he did repeatedly to his Old Testament people. He does this because he's a good shepherd. He doesn't hate us or want to harm us, but instead keep us from walking into our own destruction. A false prophet doesn't care. He lets his sheep do whatever they will and please. But Jesus has a higher goal for you and me, namely that by hearing and learning his word, we may be gathered into that sheepfold which we call the Holy Christian Church, of which he is the Lord and Master and promises to keep us unto everlasting life. Whatever crosses life might bring to you, they're not yours, they're his. And he wants you to remember that. Think of those beautiful words from Psalm 91. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and I'll honor him. This morning, St. Peter is speaking a powerful sermon about recovery. How we are returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls so that we take him at his word and trust him to care for us in every situation, knowing that everything will work out for our good according to his will. Now that doesn't mean we get what we want, and it doesn't mean that what he gives will always be pleasant, but it, he is our good shepherd. And he wants us through the passion, through this text, to learn to trust him so much that we commit our body and soul to him to care for us in every need, fully aware that the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Amen.